Hello YouTubers, Bill Griffith back again. Uh, today I'm going to walk through installing OpenShift Origin 3.11. Uh, this is the upstream open source edition of Red Hat's OpenShift uh, container platform. You can see here is a user interface of it, the admin console. Uh, you may recall from my previous uh, YouTube video here where I install uh, OpenShift container platform, the Red Hat uh, supported edition. Uh, on IBM's uh, public cloud using pre-built uh, Terraform scripts. Uh, but today I'm going to walk through doing a manual install uh, on a set of VMs, um, virtual machines on my local uh, laptop. Here is a, a picture of that architecture. Uh, so I have a MacBook Pro and I'm going to slice it up into virtual machines. So let's get started. Uh, and so what I'm going to do is split this guy up into these five virtual machines. I'm gonna have uh, uh, compute nodes, which are just one gigabyte with one virtual core. And then I'm gonna have the master uh, and an infrastructure node with four gigs of RAM and two virtual cores. So let me show you how I do that. So what I do here is uh, in VMware uh, Fusion, I have created these and I'll actually redo it, but let me show you the settings. Uh, and what I actually do is I just click here and say new and then I point to a disk here do continue and then it's asking for what disk you want so I just grab this CentOS let me show you where that comes from so this is the CentOS uh, download CentOS is the open source edition of, um, of Red Hat uh, Enterprise uh, Linux let me get this out of the way and over here in VMware uh, you see that I point to uh, that image, minimum 18.iso. Then I do continue, uh, but I just went with the legacy BIOS. So then you get to choose your configuration. So go in here and do customize, and then do save. And th then you go in and configure the settings. Okay, so for the master, I just choose um, two cores, I think. Let me check that again against my diagram. So then I go in here and boost this up, uh, and then I turn on hypervisor. And disk drive, it's defaults on my system to uh, 20. I need it to be 40. And then I just leave those alone, and then I go back over here. And then the network. The network is very important. I want to use a local network. So I just leave this default, but what I do is I come down here to the Mac, and I say generate me a Mac. And I copy this guy out. And then on uh, my version of Mac, uh, of um, VMware, let's see here, what version is this? 1103. Uh, so I go to where v, uh, DHCP is uh, configured on my VMware. I'll use VMNet 8. So in here, there is a file called uh, dhcpd.config. So I just edit that with the old virtual uh, visual editor VI and you see it already has some pre-allocated uh, subnet network so I just leave all that alone and then I go in here and add my new system so what I would do is do host okd dash master 2 and this is just tech, uh, typing hardware and then I paste that IP, that MAC address I just copied out, and then I give it a MAC address. Now, I use an IP that is not in that range. So 213.51 if you want, and then close it up. Notice I did that the wrong way. Okay, so um, the range here is 128 to 254, so I go below that, but keeps me on the same class C uh, network here so everything's connected. I do the same thing for all my worker nodes, my infrastructure nodes, etc. And so when these systems boot up, they'll get this IP address, which is what I want. Okay, so now I can uh, boot this guy up. And you see it's got my CentOS. <clears throat> so I hook, hit the up arrow and hit enter. Now it's booting against that ISO. Okay, so here's my boot. Oh, and uh, by the way, here's the minimum specs. I'm following basically the uh, open uh, OKD docs, and you see here, here's the minimum requirements that I use to basically uh, 
come to the conclusion of uh, that hardware. All right, so let's go back here, back here. So now it says uh, CentOS, so I do continue. And then choose the date and time. I'm in Austin, 5 p.m. here, it's okay. Uh, since I chose 40, I just leave that alone, but I click it so it'll automatically partition. And then I go in here and do the network and turn that on. Oh, and of course I forgot to refresh D and DHCP. So what I need to do is actually run this DMNet CLI for command line interface and do a configure. And so it stops everything and then I do the up arrow and do um, start or stop and then do it again with start. Now you see here it disconnected the network here and then and you notice it's got the IP address that matches my VM here right right here and then I enter the name so the name I would enter as okd-master2 now what I do is use nip.io and uh, you can use uh, zip.io but this is where you can create a DNS name using your IP address and the DNS resolver will return back the IP address, which is what I want. It's very important for OpenShift to have DNS entries. So then I use 51.nip.io, then I do apply, and then I configure the network. So I want to go here and turn this network always on and do done. And then I say begin install. And so now you can set the root password and then do done. And so you see it's installing. All right, so you see all of my VMs, OKD infrastructure, and here's the master. And then I do a final reboot and it's booting up. <clears throat> and then I can just uh, minimize these guys. Minimize, minimize, minimize. And then what I do is I create, uh, go to terminal and create a new shell. And I just add a new window for every server here so I can connect in. And then you see I SSH uh, in. So um, obviously I changed the Mac when I booted this guy up. So uh, that didn't work. So I removed it out of the uh, known host. And now I log in to that VM. Okay, so now I'm logged into all of those nodes, minimize this, and now we can uh, get to installing um, OpenShift. So now I can close out of this uh, diagram here. Okay, so one of the first uh, things in the official doc is to check that SC Linux is um, enabled, and you'll see that it is. Uh, so then we need to get DNS set up, Network Manager. So on each of the nodes, I'm going to uh, edit the um, Ethernet card and add a couple properties here, uh, point to Google's DNS, and then I need to do this for all the nodes. So I also need to update my network config and tell uh, network manager to uh, leave my DNS alone. That's done with this uh, DNS equals none flag. I need to do this on all the nodes. Okay, and now let's restart the network manager on all the nodes. Okay, now that network manager will leave my DNS alone, let's edit my resolve.conf and fix DNS to to NIT. And here I don't want to use the local system, I'm going to use Google's DNS. I can save that. Now what I also need to do is uh, set the ETC host so the master can contact all of the nodes. Okay, so here's my ETC host. I have the IP address followed by the fully qualified DNS name which includes that NIP.io and then the short name. So I save that. Yeah, so now I need to do this uh, SSH uh, key gen and then just accept the defaults 
and now I need to copy that over. And instead of doing this and entering the IP address, what I'm going to do is a little, little bash magic using a loop. It says loop through all the etc using awk to get the second argument. As you remember, that's the fully qualified domain name. And then SSH uh, that key over. Accept all of these and enter the, pat the root password to the system you're copying things to. Okay, so now my SSH keys are distributed to all the nodes. Now I need to get the ETC resolve out to all the nodes and this is using SCP, secure copy, to do that. Now let's copy ETC host to all the nodes so they all have consistency. Cool, all right, so done with this. Don't need this. And then the packages that I need to install. So I'll need to put this OpenShift origin in also. Put a dash Y here so it'll automatically accept the install. I'm copying this so I can do it to all the nodes as well. All right, so that's done and it says to do a yum update. Do Y so it automatically accepts. And you want to do that on all the nodes. So then the instruction says a uh, reboot. So I'm going to reboot all these nodes. So reboot it and reconnect it to everything. And next thing, I'm not using containerize. I'm using the RPM. So I need this command. Let me uh, copy paste that guy over. Let's do that on all the nodes. Then it says to do the sed command to enable. And I just need this on the master. And so then I like to check the version. Okay, so that's not good. It's Ansible 2.8. It needs to be less than 2.8 and greater than 2.4. When you run your Ansible scripts, you'll run into that problem. So let's uninstall that. And let's install just 2.7 specifically. Now if I do Ansible on 2.7. So that's good. Okay, so now it says to git clone, and I can do this all in one command with the branch command. Okay, I'm not using atomic host, but now I need to install Docker everywhere. So I like to enable Docker in case it wasn't. So by default, Ansible puts um, the config file for the inventory file called host over here. And so you see here, here's the inventory file and all the different settings you can use. And so here's the ones that I have. Specify all the children. Uh, these are the groups. And so there's one with masters, there's one for nodes, there's one with etcd. And then I specify which of the nodes, the IP address that's going to house that. And then these are the nodes. And then you need to specify sort of what function these guys take on. And then I'm just using allow all users instead of HTTP password, which you could use. And since this is a small cluster, it doesn't meet the minimum hardware specs, then this flag tells it to do not check that. And then, uh, and then this is really important also. Uh, OpenShift uses a wildcard DNS. And so this says to suffix that and then go out to nip.io, point all of those to this infrastructure node when it creates its routes and then run this as root and then do the deployment type of origin. So I can save that. And now I can test that Ansible is working by doing um, Ansible, all nodes, and the command ping. And so all five nodes came back. Uh, so that's good. Now um, I can run the playbook and I want to do the prereq. And now it's going to run through a set of automation uh, commands. And then if that's successful, then we can do the deploy cluster command. And then we wait. One thing I forget to mention is uh, turn off your firewall. All right, so that playbook was successful. And now it says to do this uh, deploy. All right, so that looked like that provisioned. <clears throat> and you can uh, check it out. OC... So there you see uh, 3.11 or 1.11, but it's OCP. Here's my nodes, and they're all ready. And then as you see, my master is on port no, IP50. So go up here and log into the console. Uh, it gives me that warning since I created my own self-signed certificate. And since I used allow all, then any ID you want will log in. 
And here is the um, console, right? You see it's uh, OCP, I can go to, actually I cannot go to cluster because I need to be an admin here. Let me show you how to do that. All right, so now I add it to um, OC, ADM policy, add cluster role to admin. And now you see all the projects show up here. Application console, Berlin, C build, C pods, etc. I don't know about this cluster console. There you go, cluster uh, admin console also. So there you have it. Uh, Open Shift Origin, the open source 311 uh, on my MacBook uh, MacBook Pro laptop. Uh, running in VMware, all uh, three three node uh, cluster, uh, running locally. All right, thanks for watching.